This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to hear it very loud. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're making this Cuban pastor feel happy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to First United Methodist Church. This is a, go a gorgeous day. We had our um, uh, Easter sunrise service at 7 a.m. It was so glad to see all the churches coming together in this time in which we have so many divisions in the, in the country. We came together as a single city. Everybody, black and whites and uh, a few Hispanics too, and everybody. <laughs> so we are, we are rejoicing. We're grateful to all of you who are making all of these services uh, possible, the music, the choir. Um, today we have a, a reduced choir. We have like an ensemble. So thank you for preparing the music, and I want to welcome everybody who is visiting today. 
Um, we don't have, uh, I don't have all the names, so I'm not gonna say any names so that I don't skip anybody, but we love you all, and we are, we're so glad to see families together. Uh, we're so glad to see uh, new families. We, we have a children's time, uh, and uh, after the children's time, we have a surprise for all the kids. So once they come forward, uh, and we will call you at some point in the service, um, if you would allow your kids to go outside this way, uh, there will be adults that will help them, and th we have a surprise for them. Um, so all the children are invited to go outside um, after the children's time. Um, the beautiful flowers that we have here have been donated in honor or in memory of loved ones. Those names, since we are not printing, the, we're not printing a bulletin, what we will do this afternoon is that those names will be live on um, Facebook. So you will see the names of the persons in whose memory or honor these lilies have been donated. If you donated one, feel free to take it back with you home after, after the service. We do have some faces of uh, beloved sisters and brothers who sometimes they cannot come to church. So we're going to show a video so that we all feel uh, welcome and we remember those who are still at home and, or in our nursing homes and we do pray for them. As the video is ready, uh, let me say that, oh, there it is. I think I also see Shirley Pittenger. I am sure that Shirley is watching because she doesn't miss one service. So Shirley, we love you, and uh, you are with us in our hearts. Uh, Pastor Chuck Weaver is with us and his wife Barbara, and uh, we... I only say their names not because I'm breaking my own rule, but because uh, they're moving to uh, Vero Beach. And we want to let them know that they will be in our prayers all the time. And uh, Pastor Chuck, um, we are still going to invite you to preach here. <laughs> it will just be a longer drive for you <laughs> from all the way from Vero Beach to come here. But uh, we will still invite you to, to be our guest preacher. Um, let's bow our heads and pray. God, the joy that we have this morning can only come from you. When we look around and we see uh, pain and suffering, we're also reminded today of the flowers. We are reminded of the stars, the sun and the moon, the birds singing, the, the pure air that we breathe, God. We are reminded that even though there is death around us, today we celebrate resurrection. You are risen and you are giving life to this world. So we come today God, we want to drink, we want to eat, we want to be nurtured by you, from you, Lord. As we come for communion, you be our strength. We dedicate this service to the honor of and the glory of the only name that can be worshipped in heavens, on earth, or whatever. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be the glory and the honor now and forevermore. The people of God say... Amen. As we do our call to worship this morning, I invite you to stand with us. The call to worship this morning is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty firmament. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God for his exceeding greatness. Praise God with the trumpet sound. Praise God with the harp and lyre. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise God with sounding cymbals. 
praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. If, you if you will remain standing, we will sing our first hymn, Thine Be the Glory. morning. Oh, you all look so pretty and handsome today. It's Easter, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, I brought my bunny because when I was your age, I loved Easter. I liked to hunt for eggs that the bunny had brought. And I like to get chocolate candy and all those wonderful things. Did you all have a good, did the Easter Bunny come to see you this morning? Well, that's wonderful. It looks like we've got a couple of Easter Bunnies here. <laughs> but we know that the reason that we really celebrate Easter is more involved in that. I'll tell you a little bit about it. You've probably heard about it maybe in Sunday school also. God created the whole world, and he wanted everyone to be happy and love him. 
sadly, people made bad choices, didn't they? Do we ever do that? Every once in a while, we make some bad choices, don't we? God was very sad that people had caused the earth to be so bad. Even though many people did not follow him, he still loved them. So he sent Jesus to show everyone how much he loved them. Isn't that wonderful that Jesus came to show us God's love? And everywhere he went, he showed how much he loved us. But many people did not believe Jesus, and they got so angry, they made him die on a cross. I made this, and uh, I thank you. I love Jesus, and he loves me. But guess what? He was dead, but after three days, Jesus came alive. He arose. Jesus showed he is stronger than death and stronger than any bad things that can ever happen. And that is why we celebrate Easter. It is because Christ is alive and in us, and he loves us so much. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you all are going to have a fun little thing in a little bit. So enjoy your day. I was taking a trip on a plane the other day just wishing that I could get out when the man next to me saw the book in my hand and asked me what it was about so I settled back in my seat a bestseller I said a history a mystery and one and then I opened up the book and began to read from Matthew Mark Luke and John Cause he was born of a virgin one holy night in the little town of Bethlehem. Angels gathered round him underneath the stars singing praises to the great I Am. He walked on the water, healed the lame, and made the blind to see it again. And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God could be our friend. And though we never ever did a single thing wrong, the angry crowd chose him. And then he walked down the road and died on the cross and that was the end of the beginning. But that's not a new book, that's the Bible he said and I've heard it all before. I've tried religion and shame and guilt and I don't need it anymore. It's superstition and made up tales just to help the weak to survive. But let me read it again, I said, but listen closely. This is gonna change your life. Cause he was born of a virgin one holy night in the little town of Bethlehem. Angels gathered round him underneath the stars singing praises to the great I am. He walked on the water, healed the lame, and made the blind to see again. 
And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God could be our friend. And though we never ever did a single thing wrong, the angry crowd chose him. And then he walked down the road and died on the cross, and that was the end of the beginning. of the beginning he said with a smile what more could there be he's dead you said they hung him and put nails in his hands and a crown of thorns on his head but I said let me read it again cause this time there is more and I believe that this is true cause his death wasn't the end but the beginning of life that's completed in you don't you see he did all this for you, born of a virgin one holy night in the little town of Bethlehem. The angels gather round him underneath the stars singing praises to the great I Am. He walked on the water, healed the lame, and made the blind to see again. And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God could be a friend. And though he never ever did a single thing wrong, the angry crowd chose him. And then he walked, and he died. Three days later, three days later, three days later. the very, very early morning hours with those of us who are in the praise band, and you heard the sunrise service, Pastor Hatch talked about how Jesus, on the day of the resurrection, how Peter kind of got outraced to the tomb because he was a little ashamed to be there. He didn't really feel worthy. He didn't feel worthy at all, I'm probably guessing. And this next song kind of asks about, is our God worthy? Is Jesus worthy? And I think that we can ensure that he is. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? 
Jesus. It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of our blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's fruit and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, Every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priests of God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of our blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? He is. this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 11, verses 17 through 26. <laughs> when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to hear those words? <laughs> Amen. 
I am the resurrection and I am the life. Thank God. It's a power that only Jesus has. I wouldn't want to have it. I would give life to the wrong person, maybe, and I would maybe condemn the wrong person, too. <laughs> but uh, God is the one who has that power. We don't. God has, the, God has the power to give life and also to take it. And uh, today we worship Jesus because he came back again from the dead. By the power of God, he was resurrected. And today we have hope of eternity with him. Let's bow our heads and pray. God, we want to hear your word, words of assurance in a world of pain. Help us to shift the focus from death to resurrection. And help us also, God, to realize today that resurrection is not something far away in the future. It's something that we can experience today. In your name we pray. Amen. So I don't know about you, but as we celebrate Easter, there are so many other things that come to mind, especially if you turn the TV on for just five minutes a day. You will see things that you would not like to see. There is a lot of pain in this world. What bothers us is that most of it is unnecessary pain senseless pain. The one, not, I'm not talking of the pain that is caused by natural disasters or illnesses that we as humans, we all have, or even sometimes accidents happen. I'm talking about senseless, senseless pain caused by sin. And sin always causes avoidable suffering. In fact, there are many definitions of what sin is, but I will give you one more today. Sin is anything that causes unnecessary harm to another person, to yourself, or to nature. That is sin. And unfortunately, there is plenty of that in the world today. Now, as we celebrate Easter today, we're reminded that that's not the only reality in this world. Besides the presence of evil, the active presence of God who raised Jesus from the dead and who promises that He is the resurrection and He is the life, that is another reality that we can sense, we can live within that, we can see if we look through the eyes of faith. Or if we do, as Jesus asked Martha, do you believe? If we believe, we can see the power of the resurrection around us. So how can we put these two contradictory realities together? The presence of sin and evil, suffering that is unnecessary, senseless pain, and then the presence of God in this world, the power of the resurrection, there is an eternal question that we are still, humanity is still wrestling with it. How can a God of love and power admit that there is so much suffering? How can God allow that suffering to continue? In order for us to ask or to answer that question, I invite us to just listen again to the story of Jesus going to the home of his beloved friend, Lazarus, because he was dead for four days. And I guess that all of us can relate now to that pain as we see so many people that our nation and the world is losing day by day Sometimes not even to COVID-19, sometimes to senseless wars. How can a God of justice be allowed or allow children to die? In this story, the story of the resurrection of Lazarus, we have the shortest verse of the Bible. 
Does anybody know what it is? I guess many of you did. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And I, 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 I'm so glad that that verse is there. It's so short. But we have paid attention to it. And we have, say, we have to say, it is okay to weep. It is okay to cry. It is okay to experience pain. If Jesus cried at the tomb, I think that that was to give us an example that in the presence of pain and suffering, we cannot live in another world. We have to live in this world with our foot on the ground and feel the empathy, compassion to those who are suffering and express that in a palpable way. Go and cry with them. Go and visit with them. Go and be with them. Let them know that you care for them, that they are loved. And I can guarantee you that they would love to have somebody like Jesus, you and I, coming together to those experiencing that pain and just cry with them. You don't even have to know what words to say. Just crying with them and being with them. And that is what Jesus was giving us an example of um, when we went to Bethany, the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, this beloved family that now was crying. We cry, and it is okay to cry. On the other hand, what the power of resurrection teaches us is that sadness or even anger cannot dominate us, and it cannot paralyze us. It is okay to cry. But that is not the end of the story. It is okay to be outraged, as Jesus was. But that is not an excuse to go about facing the sins of this world with more sin or with more pain, causing more death. Evil and sin and suffering cannot be defeated with more wrongs. It can only be defeated with the power of love. It's too sad that we see people that sometimes they feel powerless and they react to evil with evil. That is not what we read in the Bible. That's not what we read in the Bible. As we uh, cry for those who are suffering, we include everybody in that suffering. We think about the lives that has been taken unnecessarily. That includes black people. That includes Latin people, Hispanic people. And that include our sacred policemen and police women. This week we had one of them uh, killed in a senseless act and another one that was uh, badly hurt. And uh, I guess that that's happening because we have not learned to respect life. How life was created is created by God. And we have to respect and love life and care and nourish your life wherever it is found. So two wrongs, riots, burning or killing, more killing is not going to bring anybody back from the death. As we look at the story of Jesus going to the town of Bethany, we learned what we can do. And that is, let not hatred dominate you, but compassion. Compassion. That's what this world, that's what this world needs. Compassion. So when you go through the miracles of Jesus in the Bible, you will read often, so many times, that Jesus sees people hungry, thirsty, a widow crying, a mother that has lost her son, or Lazarus that is now dead. And there is a little word that comes up on and on and on and often again, and that word is compassion. Jesus felt compassion, and that was what moved him to perform the miracles that we read in the Bible today. So let me say that again. Compassion brings about 
miracles. If you feel a little bit of compassion, don't underestimate it. In the same way as we cannot put or push the pain or the tears away, when you feel the compassion that follows, I will tell you something. That is God to you. That is God talking to you and to me. Compassion moved God to do miracles. Compassion is what this world needs today. So yes, he cried. He cried with Martha and Mary, but then he goes to the tomb and station there. When Martha is telling Jesus, Master, it smells. The stench has. I guess we feel the same way so many times. It's been for too long, God. It's been, it's gone, it's, it's been going on for too long. Four days. Martha thought that there was not a remedy for it. But then there is this conversation Gospel of John 11, chapter 11, 38 through 44. And Jesus once more deeply moved. He came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. I want to think that the tomb, the stone from the very tomb was where Jesus was buried was removed because he also had compassion before that and he removed the stones away from the tomb. So Jesus is at the tomb of Lazarus and he says, take away the stone. But Lord, Martha said, by this time there is a bad odor for he has been there four days. And then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and then Jesus looked up. Thank you, because you have heard me. Do not think that God does not listen to you. I thank you, because you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. Now pay attention to this. But I said this. For the benefit of us. For the benefit of the people standing here. So Jesus wanted you and me to hear those words. Let me say them again. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I invite you to say those words. I thank you, God, because you have heard me. So when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And then Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Why do we have this text for us? I think Jesus said it here. Because he wanted us to hear this and to be aware of this. All the things that are happening here. How compassion moves the heart of God. How hatred should not either paralyze us nor move us to hate more. I think that what Jesus wants us to realize is that compassion moves the heart of God. And those miracles... The, even the miracle of the resurrection can happen again today. I think simply one of the reasons we do not see more miracles is because we do not believe enough. Remember what I said last Sunday? That we have to be like children? That means that we must have a tender heart for the Word of God and believe what this book says. Believe what God can do through you and through me when we have compassion, when we are moved, moved to compassion. 
So the title that I gave this sermon today is Living in the Power of the Resurrection. Living in the Resurrection. How can we make that future event, the future resurrection, that one day we will all experience, how can we bring that to the present? I will tell you, it is possible. We can enjoy today, here and now. We can begin to taste the flavorful life that we will have in heavens. Paul said in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, he said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live today, I live in the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. So my brothers and sisters, we are crucified with Jesus. That means we have to put away sin and death. And do not practice any more hatred. And then we need to clothe ourselves with the power of the resurrection, the new life that Jesus gives us to live in holiness. To live in holiness today. Do you believe that that's possible? Well, maybe sometimes we say like the, the man who wanted uh, Jesus to resurrect his son and Jesus asked him, do you believe? And he said, God, I believe, but help me in my own belief. And I invite you today, as we look at the world today, just confess our own belief and say, God, give us the strength. Give us the strength to realize that we are the answer to the questions we're asking. We're asking the question, how does God allow so much suffering in this world? Let me turn the question around and then ask you, do you have compassion? Do you have compassion? How do you allow the suffering around you? What can you do to make a difference in the world today? Can you put on a smile, go and live differently and let the power of the resurrection of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, operate through you to make a difference in this world? Let's say now together, we believe. We believe. That's possible. I know people here who are making that happen today by putting a smile in people's faces when they least expect it. I tell you now in the name of God, if you persist, if you keep doing that, if you grow, to, to, if you go to God in prayer, that power in you will grow. That little power, sometimes we experience just a little taste of it. Enjoy it. Let it grow. Let it overcome you. Let the power of love take control of you and not hatred. And you will be amazed of the power of resurrection operating in this world through you and through me. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to believe in, the, to, to believe in you and your power and help us to live today in the power of resurrection. And as we get ready to celebrate communion, we pray, God, give us that power, the power of compassion, the power of crying with those who are suffering and for us to be present there to make a difference without putting any limits on what you can do. You can raise the dead. You can heal the sick. You can reconcile the families that are disrupted today. You can bring peace to this world when we see war, if we just believe in you, God. Help us to be the agents of change today. Take us and use us to your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. If you will, stand and lift your voices singing Because He Lives and take these words to your heart.
seated. We're going to uh, celebrate communion today. Um, and I, I want to tell everybody we have guests today in the church. And I want to tell you that in the United Methodist Church, communion is open to everybody. That means you do not need to be a member of our church to celebrate communion or of any church. You only need to be a Christian. If you receive Jesus in your heart, if you are willing to come to the table, Jesus is not going to reject you. Uh, we do have communion with the little, little cups that were available as we were coming in. And I want to ask if somebody missed it, if you want to have one, just raise your hand. And uh, we have some here. Raise your hand if you don't have one and you, you will have, they will bring it to you. Now hold on to them and don't open them until I say so. <laughs> before we eat and before we drink, as we do at the table, we will pray, and we will bless the elements, and then we will participate of communion. But it is an invitation that doesn't come from me. It comes from the Lord. God invites to his table all who love him. That's the, that is the precondition. If you love God, you're invited. Now, if you, don't, if you think that you have not loved completely, that's okay. It says that God is, invited to, is inviting to the table all who earnestly repent of their sin. So if you feel... Uh, that you want to confess your sins, God is, is going to give you a chance now. And God is inviting you to the table. All who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, since that is the invitation, let us bow our heads and let us confess our sins before God and one another. God, we confess that we have not loved you with all our heart. We have not lived up to the expectations that you set for us. But we are here seeking to be an obedient church, obedient families, and obedient persons. Even though we have not done your will and we have broken your law, we are here with a decision to love you and love all our neighbors. God, we are listening to the cry of the needy. Forgive us when we have been deaf. We pray that you will free us for joyous obedience. Free us to serve others. Let the compassion of the Holy Spirit flow in our hearts, God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. We are all Amen. forgiven. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, Specifically, but Judas, but also by the rest of the disciples who were running away. Jesus took the bread during the last meal, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, lifted it up, and gave thanks to God. And said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Everything begins again. When we, go, when we come to the table, there is a new beginning. There is a new beginning. And in the blood of Jesus, we receive forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Let us pray. God bless these elements of bread and juice and let them be for us your body and your blood. Bless the elements that we have in our hands. And we pray, God, for those at home who are also getting ready to celebrate communion. I pray that you will bless the bread 
and the juice that they have in their hands. Bless God, the bread of this world, the juice of this world, so that when we see it, when we, when we can touch it, we will be reminded that you gave your body, you gave your blood for us, God. You died on the cross to have salvation. So we pray, God, that you will bless these elements and that they will bring to us communion with you, communion with one another, and communion in the sacred mission to go through this world bringing salvation. And we pray as your son Jesus taught us to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, you may eat the body of Christ, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> You'll stand and join for our closing hymn, He Lives.
<clears throat> Over the hillside, the sunrise is coming. Gentle and warm, it lights up the day, reflecting his light for Jesus has risen. Heaven and earth now join in the praise. Those who have seen him now are believers. And we who now by believing have seen, lifting our voices in one happy chorus, Jesus is Lord and Savior and King. Oh, glorious morning, Jesus is risen. No tomb could hold him, no stone could see. to all of you who make this possible. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, the Lord is risen and Christ is alive in you also. Go into the world living in the power of the resurrection. The blessing from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with Christ's church now and forever. And following a tradition that started the first day that Handel conducted the Messiah. <laughs> let's stand up and let's listen to the post and do it. 